Hey, what's going on, Shane? It's Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise you hate. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. If you're watching this video when it currently is out, so the first day that it drops, um, we're all basically in a nationwide and a worldwide quarantine right now. We're all trying to stay home, keep our distance from each other, and try not to spread the uh, coronavirus that is going around. And so as a result, a lot of people have reached out to me asking, you know, what am I supposed to do? Uh, my gym is closed. Um, I, I can't go do my normal workouts. What are some things I can do at home? How do I prioritize what I should be focusing on uh, when it comes to maintaining my weight loss results? Or even um, should I be focusing on weight loss right now? What is, what's the deal? So I wanted to come out with a video that had kind of you know the 10 most important or the 10 things to prioritize to maintain your, your health and maintain your uh, what you've lost in terms of weight already. That way you have something to focus on while we all go through this time right now. So the very first thing I think that's important to establish is that you want to activate what's called maintenance mode right now. So now is not an ideal time or even a good time to try to lose weight. There's a lot of other things going on right now. There's a lot of other things that are going to need your attention, that are gonna need your time, and trying to stress out about losing weight right now is probably not the best idea. Now, if you end up losing weight as a result of sticking to your healthy habits and you know staying in a calorie deficit, getting your workouts in, then great, but prioritizing and focusing on it probably isn't the best thing right now. If you can just maintain what you've already uh, achieved so far this year or over the last couple of months whenever you started that would be a much better thing to focus on because I think that it's going to be a lot more manageable than something like trying to really focus on you know the amount of calories you're consuming every day which I still, still think it's important to be mindful of but to beat yourself over not losing a pound every week uh, or every you know two weeks or a month is really not going to be good for your overall sustainable uh, healthy habit practice. So let's go ahead and dive right into tip number one. All right, so tip number one is go for more walks or go for more bike rides or hikes or whatever you can do. You can still be active. As far as I understand, and at, at the release of this video, uh, you're still allowed to go outside. You're just not uh, allowed to really stay in, in large groups of you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 people. So if you can go on a, a hike and keep your distance from each other and or go on a hike by yourself or go for a walk by yourself, you can still go outside, you can still be active. Uh, we're not being glued to our couches. We don't have to do that. We just have to keep distance from each other. We, we, we should respect that, uh, that order as well. So you can still go outside, you can still be active, you can still go for walks. If you have a treadmill at home, you can still walk on your treadmill. It might not be the same workout you did at the gym, but that the, the point is not to try to replace your workout with the same thing at home. It's to try to stay as active as you possibly can. So going for more walks, go for bike rides, do some type of low uh, intensity cardio to you know allow yourself to still get the same amount of steps, the same activity you were before, just in a different way. All right, tip number two is going to be doing body weight workouts at home. All right, so you have a body, you have some knowledge and what to do in terms of exercise. And if you don't, you can go online and search body weight workouts. There's tons of free stuff on YouTube, on Google. You can go to my website. I've created a whole entire page on my website devoted to at home workouts with no equipment or minimal equipment. So you can check that out if you want to. Um, but essentially what you want to do is you want to get some kind of body weight workout in. That could be uh, push-ups, that could be squats, it could be a combo, it could be an interval, it could be high intensity, it can be low intensity, it could be focusing on your form. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. And, and if you're somebody who's who struggles with push-ups, I actually created a video on how to do your first push-up if you've never done one before. So now's a good time to prioritize body weight exercises. I'll actually talk about that a little bit later, but do some kind of body weight workout, all right? If you can get any type of workout in every single day, I don't care if it's the same thing every single day, or if it's some variety, or if it's your focus on your core or your legs one day or your arms or it's full body just do something don't allow the fact that your gym is closed to give yourself an excuse to do nothing all right tip number three is continue eating whole foods this doesn't give you an excuse to go out and buy a bunch of non-perishable food and just eat that i mean that's probably a good idea to stock up on some of those things just in case but if if you still have availability at your grocery store which i just went to the grocery store right now and there's plenty of healthy food still available people are not rushing the store in order to get bell peppers and broccoli and things like that, there's plenty of healthy food still available. And food companies are gonna still supply these foods because they need to make money and you can't just completely stop the food chain. So still prioritize eating whole food nutrition. Stick to that 80-20 rule. 
80% of the time, really try to get as much whole food nutrition as you can. And then 20% of the time, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week, you can have those fun, processed, tasty, you know, over the top foods. Um, but, you know, again, this doesn't change anything. We're still trying to prioritize healthy nutrition and we're still trying to prioritize whole food nutrition. All right, tip number four is stream workouts from home. There's some really awesome websites out there like Daily Burn and I think there's even, I think even Peloton puts on some of these workouts where you can basically stream live video of people working out and do it along with them and you can even compete with them as far as I understand. And that's a really good way to utilize the fact that you're at home, you probably have a little bit more time on your hands, but you can stream a workout that somebody's doing somewhere else and you can do it along with them. Uh, you can go on YouTube, there's plenty of really awesome uh, either pre-recorded videos or even live videos on YouTube. Um, one of the things that I'll typically do is I'll go online or especially on YouTube and I'll go and I'll type in things like, you know, 10 minute yoga stretching and I'll do that. And I've really been able to utilize that since we've all been quarantined or at least since the gyms have closed down. Um, and it's a great way to get something in even if it's not the same thing you used to do because right now we're trying to think about what's the, the least we can do and try to maintain everything that we're doing or everything we've achieved so far. So if you can stream any type of live workout or stream a workout that's been pre-recorded, I would highly recommend doing that. All right, number five is practice body weight exercises that you suck at. If you suck at push-ups, if you suck at squats, if you suck at uh, doing a deadlift, look, maybe you've been trying to practice a deadlift at the gym and you just can't get the form down, you can practice all of these exercises with just body weight, right? You can practice your technique, you can practice your form, you can record yourself doing a squat or doing a deadlift or doing a push-up and you know see where you're making mistakes. I actually created a video on how to do uh, burpees the right way because I see people doing burpees terribly all the time, even people that should know better and, and how to do a burpee. Um, I did a, a video on how to do your perfect push-up. Right? You can check that out. I, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. You can check it out. Actually, you know what? I'll link it right up here. If you just click that, you can go ahead and check that out and uh, it'll show you how to do a push-up even if you've never done one before. So now's a perfect time to, because really for a lot of you, all you have is your body weight, to practice doing body weight exercises. It's going to improve your form. It's going to improve your technique. It's gonna improve your lifts in the gym anyway. So why not invest some of that time while you're being quote unquote forced to right now improve your body weight exercises, it's gonna improve your lifts in the gym, and it's a win-win for everyone. All right, this next tip, number six, is more for the high-intensity cardio junkies that can't relax. Um, but what I want you to prioritize is doing some low-intensity exercise. A lot of times when we're go, 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 you know, as fast as we possibly can and really get the hardest workout, we don't leave enough time for recovery. So now's the perfect opportunity to practice getting more recovery-based exercise in your routine. Walks, hikes, bike rides, uh, stretching, mobility drills, uh, yoga, anything that's kind of a lower intensity that also has uh, more of a, a cognitive effect or even a, a whole body uh, flexibility effect or, or just improves your entire fitness overall. Now's a good time to get in the routine of including that, I'm not saying replace, but including that in your high intensity workout routine. So that when you go back to normal life and you go back to the gym, you still have some experience with lower intensity exercise and you've kind of weaved it into your pre-existing workout routine. And now it's a part in, in, a part of what you're doing and it's a little bit more holistic, it's a little bit more well-rounded so that you add more recovery so you can do harder workouts when you do do your harder workouts. And I always think it is good to have a balance um, and sitting on the couch and just doing nothing is not a, is not relaxing, so to speak. I mean, maybe it is, but you still should be doing things that are lower intensity that help improve um, your flexibility, help improve your mobility, that help improve your balance, whatever it is. And I would really encourage you to start doing some of that at this time. All right, tip number seven is practice mindful eating. You're gonna be spending a lot of time at home now. You're gonna be tempted by some of the foods that you have in your pantry, because let's, let's be real, we all have foods in our pantry that we probably should not be eating, but we have them in there anyway for when we want them and that's okay. But now you're gonna be spending more time at home. You're also probably gonna be more quote unquote bored or stressed out or anxious. And during those times, there's a high likelihood, especially if you're a anxious eater or a stress eater, that you're going to reach for those things to help make you feel better in a time when there's a lot of uncertainty. And while I empathize with that, and I totally understand that perspective, I'm not a perfect trainer, I'm not a perfect nutrition coach, I struggle with, with, um, with binge eating from time to time, from stress eating, I'm not perfect whatsoever, so I get this. But what you have to do is you have to work on your some of your mental toughness. You have to work on being able to resist overeating in times of stress and times of anxiety. And 
times of being bored. So that means being more mindful of when you're eating, uh, being more mindful of what you're eating. Are you eating more processed foods now that you're uh, now that you're you know at home more often? Are you uh, still trying to stick to eating more whole foods? So nothing really changes with the mindful eating except that it maybe becomes a little bit more challenging. Or for some of you, it might be easier. Like maybe at your work, there's you're just surrounded by processed foods and. It's easier to be at home where you have control of what you uh, eat. Whatever the case may be, practice more mindful eating. You have a little bit more time right now. You, you're probably gonna be spending more time with your family as a result of being quarantined. It's a good idea to just be more mindful. Like I've seen huge improvements with my clients by just being more aware, being more mindful. Not necessarily always making the quote unquote right decision, but being more mindful in situations where it, you could very easily just give in and give give up, and uh, now's a good time to practice that. And if you get good at it now, just imagine how much better you're going to be once everything returns to normal. All right, tip number eight is also on the nutrition end, which is get a little bit more creative with your meal prep, right? You might have a little bit more time to devote towards trying new meals or trying something different. Uh, maybe it's a different vegetable, maybe it's an arrangement of fruits, maybe it's a different meal, maybe you're substituting certain foods for other foods. It's now's a good time to experiment. You can go on Pinterest, it's what I use to get ideas. Uh, you can type in, you know, quick healthy meals in under 30 minutes or something like that. And uh, you'll get plenty of really interesting results and you can try some different things. So now's a good time to spend some time being more creative with your meal prep. If you're used to eating the same old thing and, and you're bored of that, like for me, I, eating the same old thing is actually uh, simple and it gives me a kind of a sense of relief because I don't have to think about you know what it is that I need to make I know exactly what I like to eat and, and I just make that but if you're someone who needs variety in order to stay consistent then now's the perfect time to go out and try to create more variety trying to think of some new ideas to try some different things and maybe it doesn't go that well but at least you spent your time wisely and you tried it out and now you know so spend a little bit more time getting creative with your meal prep look for th some things some ideas and then when everything goes back to normal then what you can do is you can take what you like Liked and keep it in your routine and put out what you didn't like and you have a little bit more variety. All right, tip number nine is going to be substitute some of your high carb foods for low carb vegetable versions of the same thing. So a perfect example is instead of just uh, eating rice all the time, maybe try cauliflower rice or broccoli rice and try substituting some of those uh, vegetable sources, so those low calorie, low carb vegetable sources for some of your high carb sources. I'm definitely not saying you have to completely repro replace carbohydrates and take them out and this is like a come to Jesus keto moment. No, not at all. But if you're someone who usually eats a cup of rice with each meal, or maybe a cup and a half of rice with each meal, try a cup of rice and half a cup of cauliflower rice. Because again, remember adding bulk to your meals helps get you full sooner. And if you add bulk to your meals with foods that are um, high in volume and low in calories, you can get full a lot quicker without the calories adding up. So again, it's not like you have to completely replace your, your, your white rice, your brown rice, your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, whatever it is that you eat, but finding vegetable versions that are low calorie, high fiber, that don't have a lot of calories in them can add bulk, make you feel full, but also not make you feel like you're starving yourself. Because again, remember, one of the hardest things about dieting is by eating less food, you naturally you know, get more hungry. And if you can fight hunger by eating low calorie, high fiber, high volume foods, you can fill up, still feel satisfied, but not have all these calories adding up over time and, and having a hard time losing uh, losing weight. So it's a great idea for maintaining weight. It's a great idea for losing weight. It's a great idea just in general. It's one of the things that really changed my whole nutrition by substituting some of these low calorie vegetable options to either replace or to substitute in some of the calories I was getting from these higher carb foods. I was starting to notice that I was feeling uh, a lot fuller. I wasn't feeling deprived. Um, I was cutting calories out of my nutrition without even really trying and it helped me lose weight and get leaner and, and more fit simply because all I did was switch out the kind of food that I was eating and I didn't feel, again, I didn't feel deprived, I didn't feel like I was missing something. I still felt good and uh, you know, it's a great way to, it's a great way to spend your time right now, having a little bit more time to focus on nutrition. All right, so number 10 is staying more mentally tough. And I actually did a live video on this on Facebook, which I'm actually gonna cut to right now because I did such a good job doing it there that I won't be able to replace it. It was one of those flow state moments. So I'll let you go ahead and watch that version of it. All right, so number 10, mental toughness. I talked about this a little bit yesterday on my live video. If you're crumbling under the stress of what's going on right now, 
I want to first say that I empathize with you. I understand it's not an easy time to be positive. It's not an easy time to try to make improvements. It's not an easy time to even maintain whatever it is that you're doing right now. But let me tell you this. This is not the first time something like this is going to happen. I'm not saying we're going to have multiple pandemics. I'm not saying we're going to have multiple virus outbreaks. But I am saying that things in your life are going to happen and they're going to interfere with your health. And what you have to learn to do is you have to learn to say, listen, this is what's happening in my life. My priority list has completely changed. Now, other th things that I didn't typically you know, think were that big of a deal are now at the top of the list. But that doesn't mean that if your health was up here, that it's now down here. It just means that you have to go in maintenance mode, which is what we're talking about today. There's plenty of things that you can do. If you work out for an hour, five days a week, and you can no longer do that, doing no workouts whatsoever is not the solution. The solution is maybe devoting 10, 20 minutes. Maybe it's about changing your workout. Maybe instead of doing an hour's worth of exercise, you're doing a 10 minute balls to the wall, high intensity exercise that in terms of you know calories and heart rate, it's basically making up for an hour, right? I mean, there's lots of ways you can modify what you do when everything is idealistic. Because listen, we live in a very privileged time. We live in a very privileged time where we have access to food whenever we want it. We have access to gyms. We, we can, you know, obviously we have to pay for these things, but we have access to more than any of our ancestors have ever had. We are more privileged than any other society in the history of the world. And we're having to deal with a less privileged environment right now but we're still more privileged than most environments on earth. So you have to understand that this isn't a time to wallow in self-pity. This isn't a time to be sad about not getting the ideal best situation. This is time to adapt. This is how you prove to yourself that you're mentally tough enough to say, listen, I'm not gonna let this virus stop me. I'm not gonna let not going, being able to go to work stop me. I'm not gonna let all of these things that could very easily make me curl up in a ball on my couch or in my bed and do absolutely nothing. That's not what you're gonna do. What you are gonna do is you're gonna find a way to adapt. You're gonna find a way to do some kind of workout every single day for 10 minutes or go for a walk or do be active in some kind of way. You're not gonna sit on your couch and eat a whole bag of potato chips. You're not going to just mindlessly eat and just say, screw it, I can't do what I usually do. I'm gonna just give up. That's not what you're gonna do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna say, I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm not gonna worry about being perfect. I'm not gonna worry about you know trying to do everything right to the same degree that I was before, but I'm gonna do something, all right? You have to adjust your mindset to say, this isn't the same situation that it was before, and that's okay, but this is still what I can do. What I like to tell my clients when I coach them is I like to say, listen, if your plan A is what you were doing when we were all, you know, when life was normal, you have to have a plan B or even a plan C or a plan D or a plan E, F, G, whatever. You have to have a plan where if you can't do what you're used to doing, you can at least do the minimal possible. Right? In that ebook that I talked about earlier with the meal plans in it, I talk about the scale of effort. I talk about if your scale is up here and you're always giving 100% because everything is ideal and the ideal situation starts to change, you have to adapt to that. Right? You no longer can do an hour workout because you have other commitments. I understand, but you can do a 10 minute workout. You can go for a 10 minute walk. You can spend uh, you know, 30 minutes doing some type of meal prep, or you can go to the grocery store and buy healthier food and force yourself to do something that's good for yourself. Because right now is a great opportunity to actually invest in self-care because you have more free time. You have, or maybe not a whole lot of more free time. Like if you're homeschooling your kids, that's a whole nother battle I'm not even gonna try to, try to, try to understand because I, I won't even provide any help on that. But what I am saying is, is that now is not the time to just fold your hand and give up. Okay, this is actually a perfect opportunity to prove to yourself that you can do more than just give up and say, you know what, my ideal situation isn't what it used to be. I'm gonna do the best I can. And you have to learn, this is a very important lesson that I learned, is that you have to learn that any effort is important. Right? I, I understand that like a lot of us have goals. We have motivations, aspirations. We, we, we push ourselves to that next level. I'm not saying that you can't do that. But what I am saying is, is that this is, an environment that is an ideal situation, and we're not in that right now. So you have to adjust what it is that your ideal situation is and be okay with 70, 80%, or 100% effort in a different realm right now, because you're not gonna be able to go to the gym, you're not gonna be able to you know, lift weights the same way, you're gonna have to find a, a compromise. And in that, you should look for what it is that you can enjoy in that. Like there's a, I, like one thing that, I, and I actually ironically did this, um, about three or four months ago, 
I was getting really busy with work, I was building my online business, and I just didn't have a lot of time to devote to my exercise like I used to. So I started investing in quick 10, 20 minute workouts that were like no rest whatsoever, just go, go, go. And what I found was is that I actually started to enjoy that type of workout more than the workouts I was doing in the past. Now, I've come to a point now where I love both, but that experience helped open my eyes to different types of exercise that didn't limit my mindset didn't limit my capability in, in getting better at improving my health in different ways. So I hope that motivates you to get up and do something, even if it's not what you, you, know, what you used to do, right? Again, to, is not a time to fold your hand. This is a good time to stay mentally tough, to find new ways to get, stay fit or to get more fit. Like I've actually probably gotten better shape in the last two weeks, having been quarantined, than I have otherwise because I'm being able to spend more time uh, on my health and, and being more mindful of the things that I, that I think about. That's another thing. All right, I could probably talk about that for another 10 minutes, but I wanted to just really quickly end this video and say thanks a ton for all of the support you guys have provided. Uh, I really hope that you stay safe, keep your distance, you know, let this thing blow over, do your best to maintain your health, and maintain your weight as we go through this period in history. This is gonna be in the history books at one point. And, and really just make sure you take care of yourself. So thanks again. If you want to go ahead and share this video, you can. If you want to subscribe to this video, go for it. Uh, if you'd like to give this video a thumbs up, that'd be cool. I don't expect any of that right now because you probably got more important things to do, but I would definitely share this video with anyone who's, you know, that you know that's trying to keep up with their fitness that doesn't know what to do. Uh, this would be a great resource for them. So thanks again for watching and have a good rest of your day.